we must agree about the position of this one God in this one nation. The Nigerian constitution, which is supposed to have spelt at this, has been riddled with many lacunae and contradictions and has thus become a source of unresolvable conflicts in many aspects of our national life. It will be useful to put forward a few clear propositions that may guide the Nigerian Christian in choosing a credible leadership under our present circumstances. And here are a few of those propositions. The first one, which for me is the most important, that we must agree, all of us, Christians and Muslims, that we, are, we want a nation under God. It should be clear that we all admit the absolute place of God in our nation. It is not enough to exhibit flamboyant demonstrations of religious city without a sincere belief in a loving and just God. This means that we all reject the idea of a nation without religion. We can call this a kind of relative theocracy. For a Christian, there is nothing wrong with bringing our religion into our politics. After all, we are enjoined to do all that we do in the name of God. All of us, Christian and Muslim, should jointly and loudly proclaim that it is the strong loudly proclaim this. It is the strong position of the Catholic Church that for the Christian, politics should be seen as a sacred mission undertaken by those who have the talent and the grace to serve the common good and to give glory to God. This is far from the reigning idea of politics as a dirty game for dirty people, for self-enrichment and grabbing of power. How many Christians are ready to make the sacrifice which genuine politics entails? Another issue. We're talking of one God, but we are also one God and many faiths. At the same time, we should accept that in our country, we worship one God in many faiths, all of which, we must agree, all of which are legitimate, with a right to exist and to be respected. This is in line with what already exists in our constitution as the right to freedom of belief and religion, a freedom that must respect the freedom of others. The same constitution rightly forbids the imposition of any religion as state religion. But it seems that we still need to fully agree on the scope and the limits of this very important sentence in our constitution. It is probably the shortest, um, first, the, the shortest uh, verse of our article, shortest article of our constitution, article 10. One sentence, that there shall be no state religion. I'm sure that with some good will, this can be sorted out in line with global best practices. Another point that I raise, Nigeria, a multi-religious nation, can put question mark, because it depends on what you understand by it. A constant issue that was always a matter for heated debate in the many constitutional conferences held in view of return from military to civilian rule was the issue of the secularity of the Nigerian state. The drafters of the text, the text that was then discussed in the constitutional conference, the drafters of the text had put the statement that Nigeria was a secular state. The Muslim lobby strongly opposed the word secular, which, according to them, meant that Nigeria would be a godless state. This was very far from the minds of those who used the term. However, a compromise was reached, which eliminated the word secular, because it was causing problems. 
but ended up with the crucial one sentence, Article 10 of the Constitution to which I have referred. The government of the Federation or of a state shall not adopt any religion as state religion. Although this compromise suited both sides at that time, it has turned out now that it did not go far enough to fully meet the need of prohibition of state religion, which was the title of that short article. The formulation left open what actions constitute imposition of a state religion, thus leaving a wide loophole for issues like the many provisions for the Sharia law as a parallel and religious law in Nigeria. There has been the clamor to revise the constitution in such a way that the rules and practices of any religious organization does not become part of our laws. This can be done without turning our nation into a godless state. In a multi-religious nation like ours, our laws should respect the freedom of religious practice for everyone without imposing religious injunctions by law on anybody. Our principle should be that our laws should not forbid what our religions impose and should not impose what our religions permit. This, may, this way, everyone will be free to be guided by the rules of his or her own religion, subject to the needs of good law and order in the community under one law that binds everyone equally. This could be called a multi-religious formula that should be acceptable to both Christians and Muslims. Another issue, shared spiritual values. The good news is that there are many spiritual values, theological doctrines, and moral norms that we share across our different religious diversities. But the bad news is that we seem to ignore those common grounds while we emphasize only those things that divide us. Religion will be an asset in our country if we can manage to work together on the basis of the many things that unite us. These include our faith in the same one God, respect for the freedom of others, life of honesty and integrity, sense of solidarity and human fraternity, concern for the weak, the poor, and the needy. If we all agree on this, we have enough room to move on as a nation. Another issue, the primacy of citizenship. Unfortunately, we have managed to break ourselves into pieces on the basis of ethnic belongings, religious affiliations, and even political ideologies and interests. The sense of being a Nigerian is fast waning. We need to bring ourselves back together as Nigerian citizens with equality before the law, before the same law. We have to review issues like the Sharia as a parallel legal system in the same nation, the handling of the federal character and state of origin syndrome that has become clearly injustice, and other discriminatory practices. From the religious point of view, this may be described as relative secularity. In this regard, the credible leader in Nigeria must defend the citizenship rights of all his subjects with no bias in favor of his own tribe or religion and no discrimination against others. A credible Christian leader must be fair and just to everyone, including non-Christians, while still being a sincere devotee of his own faith. The same holds for a credible Muslim leader. Leadership as service. This is perhaps the greatest contribution that the Christian politician and public office holders can render to our nation. 
for the redemption of our government in this area. What Jesus said about the leader being the servant of all is valid not only for inner affairs of the church, but also for the running of national matters. In actual fact, we speak of public servants and civil servants. Even we speak of ministers, which is a Latin word for servant. And politicians often beg for our votes with the promise that they want to go and serve us. I don't know what dictionary they use for the word servants. The one I use has a very clear meaning for a servant. All these nice words need to be translated into reality to the glory of God and the good of the people, including the good of the leader himself or herself. For how long must we stand by and watch our public servants doling out to themselves remunerations far beyond what reaches their masters, which we are all supposed to be? The perks of political office have been attracting all kinds of unsuitable and dubious characters to enter politics, with the disastrous consequence that we now see. When will things change? Concluding paragraph. In the last week, this past week, events in the nation have led to serious alarms being raised from many quarters that we are in serious danger. This is now beyond political, ethnic, or religious positions. Even the National Assembly has agreed with many of us that they are not representing us well. The president and his ruling party have failed in the many promises they made to Nigerians. Perhaps we can now hope that we shall begin to try to do things differently to ensure a different and better outcome. The political leadership has lost the credibility of the majority of Nigerians, they will need to do a lot to regain this credibility. Time is running out. For now, we continue to place our trust in our Lord, in our God, and in Jesus, the great leader. In our present national predicament, the Christian community must take responsibility in the spirit of Christ, the King of Kings, to witness to truth and honest and justice in the midst of rampant lies and injustice, that is our duty. Our duty to be light of the world and salt of the earth is now more urgent than ever. Urgent also is our prayers for our nation, without which nothing good can be achieved. May God bless us and our nation. Amen. Wow, wow. Let's, let's celebrate.